We've posted two jobs in the last four weeks. We confirmed 18 interviews. One showed up. Oof. We hired that one person. Of course. She quit after two, two shifts. Three, four interviews, didn't show up. I hired two, three people, didn't show up. No text, no phone call. That burnout from being asked to work extra hours and extra days and more, more, more. There's another part of this conversation that sometimes gets whispered and someone will lean in and say, but the problem is people just don't want to work anymore. Right? You've heard it, right? I had uh, about 16 people in my team. 12 of us left. We still talk. And, we and everybody's working, nobody's jobless. Unemployment rates are at half century lows. Vacancy rates have never been this high. Every single metric in statistics would say people can't work anymore right now. These group of people are workers who are left demanding jobs and employers who can't find enough staff. And they are on a battlefield against an unprecedented shift in the global labor market. There is a rising labor shortage crisis and no one is talking about it. The retail industry is one of the largest and most important industries in the world. It provides jobs for millions of people and generates billions of dollars in revenue each year. But in recent years, there has been a massive shortage of qualified workers due to various factors, from economic conditions to changing demographics. The labor shortage is not a new problem. It has been a growing concern as humanity dawns on new ages of digitalization. But the pandemic has given birth to a new wave of digital innovation in the light of social distancing, specializing the need for online consumerism to ensure that corporate hamsters don't start running on the wheels of fortune. Although the e-commerce boom has since slowed down and in-person jobs have been returned to the people, why are so many workers choosing to stay away from retail jobs? A major factor in the labor shortage is the changing nature of work in the retail industry. With the rise of e-commerce, retailers are increasingly relying on automation to get more done with the fewer employees, reducing the demand for retail workers. While this can be beneficial in some ways, it also means that many entry-level jobs are disappearing, leaving workers with fewer opportunities for employment. And these echoes of the machine domination leaking through the cracks of aging brick-and-mortar stores are not wrong. According to a survey by the National Retail Fund Federation, the average turnover rate in the retail industry is 60%, and this is probably due to the concerns of, about job security and the impact of automation. Canadian retail employees and job seekers are scared to become part of the 4.7 million jobs that could be lost due to automation by 2030. And the retail industry is one of the sectors most likely to be impacted. As technology and automation continues to advance, many retail workers are deciding to jump ship now before they hit the robotic iceberg. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, a record number of employees left retail in the past year. 649,000 retail employees quit in April. That's the retail sector's largest mass exodus in a single month in more than two decades. That since the federal government has kept track of that number. However, failure of brick and mortar stores to adapt to current demographic trends remains another reason for the rise of e commerce. According to a report by Retail Next, store traffic declined by 7.5% in 2020 and sales declined by 9.7%. And this is probably due to the failure of retailers to appeal to young consumers who are more interested in online shopping and technology based solutions. But the labor shortage is not just about automation. Many workers in the retail industry are fuming about stagnant real wages for the last decade. Their angle doubled and given back to them as they struggled to survive against waves of pandemic inflation. The pandemic gave a lot of retail workers time to think and reconsider what they wanted out of their work situations. This reflection led to what became known as a great resignation, where many people left their jobs for new opportunities. Retail employees were not interested in carrying mega corporations on their back for minimum wage, while not being valued enough to become a stakeholder. When retail employees don't have the disposable income to splurge on their hedonic needs, their happiness is also sacrificed. So as a byproduct of low wages, many also left in pursuit of happiness. Many retailers have seen the great resignation as a defeating period for their businesses. But there are a lot of things you can learn about creating a better work environment for your employees. Evidently, work-life balance is an essential part of why employees stay where they are, so knowing how to give them a good work-life balance is crucial today. While it might be easy for some to write off this max exodus as workers looking to, for reasons to complain, it's important for retailers to take it seriously. The pandemic gave many employees a taste of what their work-life balance could look like, and it's on experience they will be quick to forget. This means that it's crucial to listen to their feedback and improve the areas of concern in their workplace. Through higher wages and benefits, better training and development opportunities, more flexible work schedules, and partnerships with educational institutions, retailers can create a more vibrant and sustainable real estate industry for the future.